Brightstorm has thousands of high-quality videos covering all major subjects. Please check out more at www.brightstorm.com. This pencast is going to be about how you can simplify radicals that have integers and variables. Now, the first thing I want you to be aware of is that there's usually in your textbook going to be this little note that says, assume all variables represent non-negative numbers. And the reason why is because in when I'm doing these problems, if x was, let's say, negative 2 or negative 10 or some negative integer, um, it would make a difference if I was doing negative 2 times negative 2 versus negative 2 to the third power. Um, so when you're doing these problems, usually your textbook tells you to assume all variables represent non-negative numbers. Otherwise, if it doesn't say that, you get into some pretty high-level absolute value ideas that will show up in calculus. So just pause on that. Be aware that it is important that all the variables represent non-negative numbers. Okay, so what I'm going to be doing is trying to simplify the integers first and the variables second. In numbers 1, 2, and 3, they're very, very close. They all begin with square root of 36, but the difference is the power on x. So let's go ahead and do them. Square root of 36 x squared, if it helps you, you could write it like this. Square root of 36 times square root of x squared, because I know square root of 36 is 6 and square root of x squared is 6. Or excuse me, is x. That's it for the first one. Now what if, it have, what if instead of having x squared, what if I have x to the fourth? Well, I'm looking for square roots of things, so I'm going to split x to the fourth into x squared times x squared. So now I have 6, x, and x again, and the way I would write my result is 6x squared. These are all being multiplied together. Let's try number 3. Now I have x to the third power, so if I want to split things into perfect squares, I would use x squared, and I still have one more root x left over, and that's okay. What's going to happen is I'll have 6, times x, and then square root of x cannot be simplified. My final result looks like this. It's kind of scary because you have x inside the radical and also x outside, but that's okay. That's proper math notation. Okay, now numbers 4 and 5, instead of using a perfect square integer like 36, I'm having, having you guys try another step, and that's adding in a um, non-perfect square number. So like for 98, I want to think about which of my perfect square numbers multiplies into 98, um, and I know that 49 is a factor of 98, so I'm going to make that square root of 49 times square root of 2. Then for y squared, square root of y squared, I'll deal with that in a second, and then square root of x. I'm going to try to simplify each one of these. These are all being multiplied together. Square root of 49 is regular old 7. Square root of 2 just stays as square root of 2. Square root of y squared is regular old y. Square root of x just stays as root x. Now the last thing I want to do is rewrite this because the proper way to write this in general, the convention, is you put the, um, the non-square rooted stuff out front and then the square rooted stuff as a product at the end. Okay, we're going to try one more. Same idea. I'm going to split up the integers, split up the x's, split up the y's. So 12, I know that 4 multiplies into 12 and that's a good idea because 4 is a perfect square. Then for x to the third, I'm going to split that into x squared times root x. And then y, mm, can't do anything with it, just root y. So let's go and take any square roots we can. Square root of 4 is 2, root 3 stays. Square root of x squared is just plain old x, root x, root y. Okay, now let's rewrite this a little better. The non-rooted stuff goes first, and then um, usually we put the integer followed by the variables under the radical. So this pencast here is about what to do if you have numbers and variables. Um, and we've looked at ones that are perfect squares as well as ones that are not perfect squares. So this is, a, again, an important skill. You're going to practice it a lot. You might want to try watch this pencast again or try a few examples on your own as you watch it. And by two. I can't do this with you two laughing back there. Work it. Work it. So if we had, no, that's not right, three coplanar points. So have you ever gotten off an airplane? <laughs> that should be... Yeah. Dang. Is it like 500 degrees in here or what? All right, so when you're in chemistry class, you're going to be doing a lot of work. You're going to be starting over. So as an example, we could consider like you've got a chain hanging from two, um, two picks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>